last night's dive was awesome for so many reasons. Oh my gosh, is that Madripoor? That's Madripoor. My favorite thing was the ancient Madripoor colony. It just is so nice to see big corals that have clearly withstood the test of time. It's just exciting to know that they're able to grow in these other parts of the globe versus places we've already found them. Yay! Yep, that's right. We got it all tonight. Oh, oh yeah. That's <laughs> eel octopus interaction. Uh, Fantastic. Tarina oh Seamount uh, next to Kawaki. Finding really cool stuff there. <laughs> like the double octopus in the field of really Gorgia. It was fantastic. It was cool. Really cool. Since we know so little about the deep ocean, we've got to find out what's where to begin with. And that's what we're doing out here. We're just raw exploration on these seamounts to find out where life exists, who's here, what depth are they at. I often think of the, the biogeography, the distribution of animals or species in the deep sea, like we see them on land. There's a reason why we have koala bears in Australia and tigers in China. So where are the continents in the deep ocean where animals can no longer disperse and communicate and they've been separated? Got it. Go slowly, he'll stay in there. You got the amphipod too. Nicely done. Awesome. Start to finish, beautiful. Yeah, the associates, the animals that live on corals are fascinating. To me, it's how they have co-evolved to live in a habitat that is alive. And we know so little about any of them that everything could be novel and it's just so fascinating to wonder what a certain animal is even doing on a coral and why it's there. Oh my goodness. I think it is. I don't think I know that's what this crab is. We saw a crab for the first time last night that, that I haven't seen before that had snipped off a piece of coral and put it on its back legs and took those over its head like a canopy to do something, protect it, I don't know. But that's what's fascinating. They do all these strategies that, that we can only guess at and look at the patterns right now. So what I want to do is find out the mechanisms. So when the ROV comes back on deck, um, we pull the samples off, we bring them back into the lab, and we try and keep the samples in cold seawater until we can start processing them. And the idea is that we're collecting portions of each of those samples for genetic analysis, for isotope analysis, looking at the corals under a microscope and things like that to get a better idea of like what that actual colony is. The features that a bacteria can have in the sea are so different than what we see on land and it's a very pristine environment and there's not many of those left on earth so it offers an opportunity to look how the native or endogenous microbes interact with the animals of the deep sea. What kind of like patterns and recognition of microbes these animals use to regenerate over time. I've followed sharks before and they always seem to lead me to really cool coral habitats. Look at all of it. Oh, okay, yeah. Finding these mounds of coral at Arona was really spectacular. And it's something that isn't known for at least 2,000 miles around us. So this is totally unique for this part of the world. Large habitat made by these corals accumulating over really long periods of time. It's really spectacular and something I just dreamt that we might find while we're out here. And Come then, on, of course, Oreo. we get an Oreo. Wouldn't just, be the same. Just like the little sprinkle on top. <laughs> Thanks, Oreo. 